What's the total? Just give us the, just hit us, man. The, what is it? The grand total, if you were to buy it all at one time, would be close to $6,000. And that's you doing? Turnkey. Turnkey. Okay, my little project. I, um, this has been going on for some time. First thing I did was I got my antenna, and you have to get the wet stamp. And what do I mean by wet stamp? It's an engineer's stamp. And it comes on the drawings. It's this nice big thing here. This is a Xerox copy, but it's an engineered stamp. So some civil engineer has signed his name on this, saying that this is what you have to have in order to put that tower up. And the county says it has to be this year's stamp. So if you have one of these from five years ago, not valid. You have to go and get a new one. Now, when I went and bought my new one, I got three sets of plans, three sets of wet stamps for 300 and some odd dollars because they don't give those away free. But what you're going to get is you get a whole thing and then you have to turn it in. I got my lot line and plot. I have a drawing that I had to make showing where it was going to be and where everything else was on my property. After I got through with that, then I had to make another drawing showing basically where it was in relationship to the street and my property lines. Septic tank, any electrical you have. And then the fun starts. <laughs> I don't do my own rebar, okay? Because the rebar drawing on here, which was this one right here, is very exact. They tell you exactly what rebar to use, how far it has to be spaced apart, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I called a company down in Fremont. Uh, their name is J, PJ Rebar in Fremont. And all they do is, is rebar for the state. For anybody who wants rebar done, you bring them a drawing. They'll give you an estimate. And this ran me $200. Now, it would have been $800 if I had paid them to deliver it to my house. So $200 and an hour and a half time down to pick it up and an hour and a half time back, I think it was well, money well spent. Oh, so they, built you the cage. they built the entire cage to specifications. Okay, I was all ready. Uh, they called me and said it's ready to go. I went down and picked it up. And it's tack welded together and then wired also so that it, nothing's going to move even when you transport it all over the bumpy roads and everything else, nothing moves. The other thing that uh, you're going to have to have, which they sell you when you buy the, uh, is a structural analysis report. And it has to be wet stamped also. And these are all the calculations for all the steel they use in making the tower, wind loads, I mean it just goes on and every page is stamped. And it tells you how my tower is going to be 38 feet. It's in two sections, 21 feet each, with an overlap of four feet. And then they go into all the specifications for all the different steel they're using and the uh, zinc coating that they put on it. And all of this is gibberish to me, but the civil engineers evidently love it all because they just go through it with a fine tooth comb. It took me a month to get this thing through the county. The first Part of it wasn't bad at all uh, because I don't have any electrical and no plumbing. So that went flying through there. Where it hit, hit the glitch was somewhere that uh, somebody had to do some calculations and they got bogged down. And so then they finally got it finished. They took the whole thing. Again, here's the, white, uh, the stamp with the uh, date. I put this in. And this went in on August 27th of 18. This is March of 19, so that gives you an idea of where it went. And then they show you the layout for the pin drawing for your legs to mount to. And then I had to provide them a antenna, a load, so they could see what I was putting up. And then they wanted to know, what was the last one here? Uh, my amateur license. So I put that all together and gave them three copies of this, plus a fourth, and then I Xeroxed two for myself that I kept at home. And so every time the guy comes out to look at my little project, 
he wants to see that, and then he wants to see this. And you can see right here that he's already signed off on the hole, the forms, the steel, and so all I have to do is finish setting it up, and then he comes out for the final, and then it's all done, but the shouting. Uh, I have to put three eight-foot ground rods down within six inches of the top of the soil, and then I'm going to be using, I believe it's number either one or one-aught cable that has to go from the legs to the ground rods and then it has to be attached to each leg. So I still have some more to do before I, I call them in for the final. Aren't you do I? not want to bury it in your concrete, okay? And I've seen, that was one of the things that the engineer asked, well, why don't you just have a rod go through the concrete down into the ground? And I explained to him that it would only take one <coughs> bolt of lightning and the entire cement would come blowing apart because it has water in it. And that much juice will turn that into steam. And I'm a chemistry teacher and I understand exactly what happens when water goes to steam. It creates so much pressure, it'll literally disintegrate the, the foundation. So you'll be back at square one. So you have to put them outside the foundation at least one or two feet so that they're out. Now the other thing that they do in uh, when you get your uh, stamped item from the tower people <coughs> is they specify the hole that this has to go in, the minimum size you can have. And the minimum size that this tower will take, or the minimum size the hole has to be, is four by four by five foot deep. And the cement, uh, the cage has to be minimally within three inches of the side, three inches of the bottom, and three inches of the top. And you'll notice here that they have angled edges. So when they came out to look at the, at the pour, they wanted to see it exi looking exactly like this on the top. They didn't want square edges, they want the 45. So I took a two by four. Eight foot long, cut it in half at a 45, flipped it over, put it on top of my form, and that made my 45 edge. It wasn't hard at all. It took me all of maybe 30 minutes. But they want to see it just like it is right here, no exceptions. So if I hadn't done that, I guess I'd be getting a grinder and sanding down the cement at a 45 degree angle. Okay. I have a quick question about your wet stamps. The uh, The... The U.S. Tower supplied you with their engineering and this their is, stamp. Yes. Is that stamp, uh, does the county accept that stamp yes. without a time limit? No, they, they'll they only accept, oh, thank you. They'll only accept the stamp that's current. So it has to be in the year that you are. The, the year that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. okay. Like I had a stamp from five years ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a valid stamp, but uh, they would not accept it because it wasn't in the year so of the project. So if you purchase your brand new U.S. Tower, in 2019, let it let it lay around the ground until February of 2020. You're you gonna gotta, have to get a. New you got to send it back to them and get a new stamp. No, you don't send it back to them. You call them up and say. Oh, I mean, U.S. Tower has to provide you. Okay. Yep, and that'll be another three hundred and ten dollars. And did U.S. Tower do the uh, wet stamp in, uh, engineering for mm -hmm. your? Uh, your base as well. Mm -hmm. So they did everything. They did everything. You didn't. I have didn't to have to do anything. All you have okay. to do is have the you checkbook have to ready. Pay, you just paid just money. Okay. Si sign a checkbook and send it off to them. Okay. And about and about a week later, I mean, they're very good. They don't drag their feet. Uh, U.S. Towers had that to me in about seven seven to ten days. All wet stamped, all set up, three sets of copies. Uh, okay. I asked them for three sets of copies. They sent me three sets of copies, all wet stamped, and then I made two more of my own that were just Xeroxed because the county wanted four. Three of them had to be wet stamped. The fourth one could be a copy. Yeah. What about the soil? Do you have to have these soil tests? Nope, because this, uh, if this is done correctly and you use six sacks cement, this will be about 6,000 some odd pounds of concrete down there. And they want square edges. They don't want to see round edges. When they came out to look at it before we were told we could pour, we had to have perfectly straight edges all the way down. The bottom had to be exactly flush. I mean, they were specific. And then it rained. <laughs> so this is what happened in the sequence. As you can see from the picture, I have the... Uh, it's perfect. I mean, it is perfect. All the sides are square, the bottom square. It is ready to go. Then the rain came, the 
two days later. Next slide. This is what it looks like, again, ready to go. You can see the extra steel that we put in there. We put it on top because the guy who I was working with, uh, he wanted more steel than what they required, especially at the top. And I said, fine, no problem. These are 27 inches long, the bolts, 27 inches long. They have welded ha uh, one inch uh, square metal pieces on the bottom, about two inches by two inches. And no, you don't have to wire them to the cage, okay? They aren't coming out. Next, please. That's what it looked like. Beautiful, ready to go. Only problem was the hole was a little bigger than four by four. It was actually more like uh, four and a half by four and a half by five and a half. They don't care. It doesn't make any difference. The minimum is for three inches for the rebar to the side. So if I have four and a half to the sides, that just means extra cement. They don't care. That's not a problem. Next one. Uh. Wow. We talk about flooding. That puppy's flooded all the way up to the top. And that was just due to those three days of heavy rains that we had. So next slide, you can see I'm starting to pump. I've got it down just about to the bottom. And I look down the bottom, it's no longer square sides. It's folded in, it's come down. So we had to pull everything out and then the guy went back down and dug it by hand, scraped it all the way down, got to a solid, uh, unwatered, unmud, which added another six inches to the bottom of it. <clears throat> and then scraped down the sides until they were all exactly square again, square edges, which added another four to five inches to the side. Wow. So now I no longer have a four and a half by five and a half inch or an inch deep hole. I now have a hole that's roughly six foot by six foot by six foot. Okay. And, and the inspector has already signed off on this. So whatever happens now is just pour, pour it and go. Okay. He, he said it was fine to go. So, but we did it right. We didn't screw around. We didn't leave the edges rounded. We trimmed it back down and went next. Unfortunately, I wasn't home when we poured this. I was down with Bruce in Quartzsite, Arizona. So I'm sitting down there listening, and the, my, the guy's calling me and say, we're pouring it today. And I said, fine. <clears throat> Do you have a vibrator? And he says, oh, yeah, we got two of them. So I said, okay, everything is going to come out okay? He says, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I said, okay, fine. Hey, he was a good man. He did a good job. Next. We even put sandbags around it because we knew that there was another storm coming. So now we got this thing all set up, ready to pour. We left the pump down, automatically plugged in so it had a little float on it. So it didn't make any difference. It was going to get pumped out. It wasn't going to get filled up again. And we put sandbags around it, and then we put a tarp over it. And sure enough, it rained like hell, but nothing went in. So when we pulled it back, it was bone dry. Next. <laughs> And there it is, bone dry, all ready to go. And you can see the thing on the top here that holds the tower. Yeah. Okay? Bracket. The bracket. Now that bracket is made so that you use a winch to crank up the tower. It's a self-erecting, and I have the winch. And so it's not going to be hard to put up at all. Okay, we're ready to go. We're down in Arizona. Let's see what happens next. Ta-da! I come back home, and he's already taken the forms off it. You can see the 45-degree angle right here at the edge. There's a double nut. So there's two nuts on top and one nut on the bottom. So you can put a level on that, and I use the machinist level, which is highly accurate, like five ten thousandths of an inch. <coughs> and I sat there and readjusted all the nuts until they came out exactly square. And then I tightened these down. It doesn't show it here, but I tightened these down. And then I put a lock washer in between it and some good old Loctite and <laughs> cranked it down. And then I put the level back on top of it. Hadn't moved. So now all it is is I have to move all this dirt out. See this dirt right here? That's what came out after the flood. 
Wow. Before this pile is the before pile. This is what came out of here when the backhoe was here digging it out. Had it all, you know, all this dirt over here. That's all came out of there after the flood. How many yards of concrete did you wind up using? About eight or nine? No, we ended up using six and a quarter. Six and well, that's not bad. Well, not that bad. Two thousand, I think it's about two thousand pounds a mm -hmm. yard. Mm -hmm. So I've got about ten thousand, twelve thousand pounds your, of your, cement your there. Your hole was was six feet by six feet by six feet. Six almost, yeah. That's thirty six hundred and eighty. It's two hundred. Two hundred some odd. Feet. Divide, yeah, divide it by, by twenty seven. Yeah. Which is eight. Eight yards? Okay. Well, I wasn't there. I just wrote the check. You just wrote the check? <laughs> but about, it isn't you, going when the guy... 120 bucks a yard these days, isn't it? 125. Yeah, a thousand bucks, man. Almost. But uh, the guy came out for an inspection. I called him. I thought all I had to do was have that, and he'd be happy and walk away. Nope. So he looked at it, and he looked at everything around it, and he said, that's nice. And I said, thank you very much. And he says, yeah, when you stand it up, and you got the tower up there, and you got the antennas on it, call me back. So I got six months to get that done in. I think I'll have it done before that. The inspector wants to see your tower up with antennas on it? Final inspection. All the ground rods have to be in. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting one ground rod over here, which will take care of the back leg. One ground out here, I'll take this leg. And one ground out here, I'll take that leg. Um, how are you going to run the coax to the house? What are you going to do there? Well, the coax is going to be fairly easy. I'm, I've looked at it very carefully. I see people put it down the outside of the antenna, and it drapes all the way down the ground. That's a lot of dead weight on wire. So what I intend to do is you have a rotor up there, and on the inside of the rotor, I'm going to put a chain that's about 15 feet long, and then I'm going to have the wire come down. It's going to curl around into the rotor, and everything on top will be flexible enough so it can make pivot turns. And then I'm going to attach it to the chain about every two feet all the way down with tape and then put a uh, radiator tightener on it, J hose clamp, just tight enough to make sure it holds it. And I'm going to do that for about uh, 12 feet and then the rest of it just hangs inside and comes out the bottom. So when I crank it up or crank it down, it's going to stay on the inside. I don't have to worry about it being on the outside and get cut off. Yeah, it takes a little bit more, if in a way of thinking, but... I was wondering, are you going to... So then will the coax just be laying on the ground going to the house? Are you going to put a con well, into some sort of... No, I'll put it in, I'll put it in conduit. conduit. And I've got a trencher, and I'll take a trench from here over to the house. I'll move that out of the way and put it underneath that. And then, or I could take it right off by that telephone pole and then up and over. And I haven't made the final decision on that one. It's about the same amount of conduit. I need, uh, not conduit, uh, coax. coax. It's oh. about 100 feet, 110 feet. How many antennas are you going to put up there? Just the one? Or uh, no, this multiple. I have uh, 10, 15, 13, 17, 20, 15. That's the Mosley. That's the big beam. Six foot above that, I'm going to put a six meter, uh, six element. And then about six feet above that is two meter, 440. That's a vertical. So they're separated enough. They shouldn't give me much of a problem with SWR, and it shouldn't be too much interference between them. They want a quarter wavelength, but I don't have that much pipe because that would be real tall, and I'm not, not going to do that. I'm only making the antenna two foot above the top of the tower. So where the tower comes out, I have a uh, thrust bearing here that I'm putting in very carefully, and then a guide so that the, the pipe can't wiggle at all because I don't want the weight on the rotor, and I don't want the rotor to feel any tilt sideways because you ruin your bearings that way very quickly. <clears throat> so when I get through done, get through with this, I'll have inch and a half pipe going through a sleeve that goes to two inch with a thrust bearing and a collar that I'll weld on the inch and a half so the collar sits right on the thrust bearing. And then right above that, six feet will be another thrust bearing. And then the Mosley will sit on top of that so it can't slide down. <coughs> and on top of that, it's another six feet. It'll be another collar so that the uh, six-meter beam can't slide down. And on the top, I don't have to worry about that. That's just a clamp on for the two-meter 440. Hmm? 
Uh, I think I have a tail twister. I'm, I'm not quite ham for or tail twister. I got it from a guy in uh, Washington who rebuilds them. And uh, he gave me, said if I had any problems, just send it back. He'll rebuild it again. But I haven't put it up yet. So I haven't had any problems. Yeah. 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 So, but, um, and then, uh, let's see. No guy wires. I didn't want any guy wires. But I do have 40-meter dipole, and uh, uh, I'm going to have an 80-meter dipole on it. Uh, they won't be guy wires, but they're going to be up there 40 feet. And then when I get that finished, I have two more lift 20-foot uh, uh, pipes that I have. I'm building uh, hoists for that'll hold up. So it'll be 40 at the top and 20 on the sides. So I'll have almost a perfect 45-degree angle. It takes a little bit of planning. takes a little bit of time. And I've been uh, spending money slowly. Um, getting things all together. I draw my plans out and then I figure out how much it's going to cost and a little bit here, a little bit there, and then pretty soon now I got the whole thing all together so I don't have to spend a lot more money. It's all sitting in the backyard. I think the biggest expense though was the cement. But it is only going to be down there once. I'm never going to have to do it again. My wife even allowed me to do that. How do you like that? I, you know, that's funny. That was what I was thinking the whole time. was like, yeah. man, your wife is like, you know, okay. Hey, <laughs> I got her to get her license, so that's half the secret. There you go. Any questions? Let me know when you're going to sell your home. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we'll have to work on that. The tower itself is 38 feet. The first antenna is going to be at 40 that's the Mosley. The six, millim uh, six millimeter, yeah, six element, uh, six meter beam will be at uh, 46 feet. And then the uh, two meter 440 vertical will be at uh, 52. Bob. I'm going to ask the one question that I probably shouldn't ask, but I'm going to ask it anyways. I think there's a handful of people in here that would consider putting up a tower and might be interested in knowing, including the antennas, because you've got a Mosley three-element yep. uh, beam. That by, the, by the way, that's a super beam. And um, all the other stuff, the four, tail twister four, he's, everything he said tonight is good stuff. So, How not, much is it worth? What, what did it, from start to finish, and don't worry about the coax, because you don't know how much that is yet, because I haven't done it. Well, I've used but, 213. Do you, so you have, an, you have a clue what that's going to be? Yeah. What's the total? Just give us the, just hit us, man. The, what is it? The grand total, if you were to buy it all at one time, would be close to $6,000. And that's you doing? Turnkey. Turnkey. But that's what I you're mean, doing a bunch of you, work. You remember what I said? I didn't put the cement in the ground, right? I had somebody else did it. I had a friend come over with a backhoe. I paid him for the backhoe time, and he dug the hole. The other guy did all the work on taking out the water and everything else. So, I mean, it's one-time shot. <laughs>